learning a new language is hard, but what if that language was a made-up language? Would that make it easier or harder? I recently listened to a podcast about creating languages for television shows, and it turns out that it is an incredibly complex process that requires a lot of creativity and an intimate knowledge of language. Ta pag ta be da mu tegvem vikelnish. To be or not to be, that is the question in Klingon. <laughs> Klingon is a constructed language, or a conlang for short. A constructed language is a language that is consciously created in its fullest form. So that means it has vocabulary, sentence structure, it has grammar, usually has a sound system, and is associated with a culture. The Klingon was created for a warrior alien culture. So they use the sounds that we produce very little of in English. So if you said, uh-oh, the sound at the end of the uh is a glottal stop, and it's prolific in Klingon. For the K sound, they use your uvula, uvula, which is the thing that hangs in the back of your throat. The grammar in Klingon is the opposite of English. So if you were to say, Mona Lisa boarded the Enterprise, in Klingon it would be the reverse, so it would say, Enterprise boarded Mona Lisa. It's also inundated with verbs, a lot like the Mongolian language. But language is complicated. So we have verb conjugations. They can be irregular and regular. You can have variable sentence structure. You can have very complex sound structure. English is considered a natural language. So it's evolved naturally over time, like Swahili or Bantu or even American Sign Language. Jargon, dialect, and code are all parts of languages. So like Pig Latin is just a manipulation of sounds. It's not a conlang. In A Clockwork Orange, the hoodlums, they use a fabricated slang, like using the word drug, which really means friend in Russian. One of the more recent natural languages is Ni Nicaraguan Sign Language. So it's been created only in the past 50 years. It's evolved naturally from a community of deaf people in Nicaragua that just needed to communicate. It was not created by just one person. The sounds that we use are limited to our human anatomy. So we have nostrils, a tongue, a throat, a larynx, we have diaphragm, but to imagine different anatomy would mean endless possibilities. Sometimes letters cannot represent all of the, the sounds we make or how words are pr pronounced. So that's where suprasegmentals come into play. So suprasegmentals tell us to prolong a sound or to add extra breath, to add a click or a clap, or also how to break up a syllable. In Mandarin, the word ma can mean five different things. So supersegmentals show us how to pronounce those words. So if you said ma, it would mean mother. Ma, it would mean numb. Ma would mean horse. Ma would mean scold. And just ma would be a question word. You may have heard um, Minyanese and thought, I don't know what they're saying, but I understand everything. Minions communicate through intonation, so they use very basic sounds, like a lot of P's and B's, the, the first sounds you learn as a baby. They use me for I, and very simple consonant-vowel sound structure. So their juvenile humor complements their juvenile language. It is not, however, considered a conlang, because Pierre Coffin made it up as he went along. So he took from a menu of Indonesian, Korean, Japanese, and English, and Italian, and used a lot of onomatopoeia. On the other hand, Dothraki is one of the more current conlangs. So it was created for the Game of Thrones. George R. R. Martin came up with 56 words in his books, and they hired this man, David Peterson, to create an entire language based on those 56 words. J.R.R. R. Tolkien, however, is the god or, excuse me, the grandfather of conlangs. So he wrote Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and he actually created his languages before he created his stories. He studied ancient Germanic and had a particular love for Finnish. 
So he was the first to establish that language is inseparable from culture. He created the ancient Elvish, but then he created all of the branches that came along with it and evolved. So with stories of friendship, uh, war, in, travel, alliances, the language has changed. Um, and he did in 20 years what it took the Romans thousands of years. So th when the Romans conquered Europe, the term for hand was manus. And in French, it became me, and in Spanish, mano. In Elvish, the word for people was quendi, and it became pendi, and then kendi, uh, depending on what tribe you're from. J.R.R. Tolkien has obviously left his mark <laughs> and made an impression on all of us. The top left corner and the right corner are um, names in Elvish, and they're beautiful. One of them means uh, all who wander are not lost, and the other means may the sun shine upon your path, and I'll let you figure out which one that is. <laughs> not all languages are created for television shows. Dr. Ludwig Zamenhof created Esperanto in 1887, and it was his gift to the world. Esperanto means one who hopes, and what he hoped was that he could create a language that we could all share. So he took from English, Polish, German, Swiss, and he made a very recognizable language, no irregular verbs. And he wanted you to learn this language so it would be easier for you to learn another language. So I think we can learn a lot from Esperanto, because language is what bridges our relationships, and communication is essential for our connection. So in Esperanto, iri preni bieron kaj paroli yoj lingvoj. Let's go get a beer and speak some languages. <laughs>